esteemed colleagues. I hope you can hear me well. I hope you can hear me this way. Uh, this uh, paper is uh, the continuation of a series of papers uh, uh, done uh, by our group in Sunil and then at the department where I work. Uh, so, oh, we did experimental works uh, on uh, tumors and animals, studying the morphogenesis of tumors, uh, the impact of different concentrations of ozones on um, tumors. Uh, uh, the last world paper was about the culture of malign cells and uh, this work is not the last one it's a part of a lot of works and now we have not reported on it yet but now I want to present these results because I believe they are of great interest and since this paper is an experimental one not all papers on uh, inoculations um, or like on tumors, inoculated tumors uh, can be treated clinically because they're not like real tumors, so their mechanisms of development are different, but their influence on the liver or like uh, the influence of the zone, the cell line on the liver uh, in animals is interesting because uh, the liver is a hemostasis unique organ upon which plastic processes depend within the body because the liver synthesizes just about everything that has to do with the body, serum, proteins, uh, and others, and it's a detoxication organ, so it's important to be aware about its current state in animals uh, affected with tumors and people affected with tumors because uh, the liver is poisoned by toxins uh, that develop the, when a tumor develops, its metabolism is damaged and all processes within it are damaged. And all correction methods of these states uh, and uh, conditions are of great interest. Next slide about our experiments. The objective of this paper was uh, to study a number of biochemical uh, indicators uh, with uh, in animals with the tumor sarcoma 45 in using saline. And the reason why it sounds so modest, just a number of biochemical indicators. Whenever possible, we studied many of them, protein, lipid um, exchanges and other types of bioregulators, but uh, in the interest of time, I have presented in this paper just a few of them that are of the utmost interest, as I believe the experiments were conducted. Next slide were performed on uh, white uh, rats of no bread, 32 of them were intact and no tumors in them, and we had a tumor carrying rats with sarcoma 45. I should say that within this experiment, the uh, sarcoma 45 tumor is not metastasized, so the liver is not affected by the tumor, and that's the reason why we wanted to see this unaffected uh, um, tissue, how it acts in these uh, conditions. The first group included um, uh, 20 days uh, of 15 uh, rats, and the second group, 30 days of 15 rats, and group 3 and group 4 um, had uh, 20 and 30 days respectively with ozonide, saline, uh, periotinally, uh, peri and uh, intravenously injected in order to prepare the uh, ozone. Uh, the concentration in the gaseous phase uh, for perine auto uh, injection was 1.2 milligrams per liter for injection to the tumor 3 milligrams uh, and pay attention to these uh, in letter we can see uh, that uh, the numbers are cited in micrograms so we uh, used uh, the evaluation of free radical oxidation uh, because uh, we introduce ozone and we uh, have uh, to examine the status of the, the tissue and then we have to uh, study the influence of this oxidizer so we used the biochemical emission method the induction method using our 
biochemical luminometer. Then we studied uh, the number of products, the amount of primary and uh, and uh, products uh, shift basis. Also, we studied the antioxidant protection systems, like the activity of such things as uh, SOT, catalase, and glucose. Uh, six phosphate decoxygenase. So this ferment is not only an antioxidant, but it uh, uh, upkeeps the normal level of glutathione and it uh, maintains the activity of uh, glutathione peroxidase, which is very important in order to study the genetic status. Adenosine um, phosphate adenosine three phosphates and others were studied which carry energy these compounds and there are some more rare ones like gonosine diphosphate and gonosine three phosphate which are less common and adenosine three phosphate is in a very important uh, compound upon which uh, the whole metabolism of the organ depends uh, and um, GTF is a unique micro chemical uh, compound that uh, provides for plastic processes like protein synthesis. And then and the energy state depends on the carbon uh, on uh, cardiohybrid uh, exchange. Uh, and the growth of a malign tumor leads to oxidation of the internal environment. That's why I wanted to study lactate and pyruvate. And the last thing that I think that could be also of interest, there have been some papers on it, so we studied the content of cyclic MAF and cyclic gamma F. Though also are secondary intermediaries, so to say, in English translation, they're um, secondary messengers in English, as they're known. Uh, they carry the signals of hormones and different neuromodulators into the cell. Adrenaline, for example, is produced in low concentrations and it acts upon specific receptors, cells. And uh, on the other side of it, there is adenosyclase ferment, which is activated. And uh, inside the cell, a cyclical MAF is uh, uh, synthesized. And the cyclic MAF is 100 times more than this hormone. The cyclic uh, MAF uh, phosphorylates the sums of the ferments, proteins so that kickstart uh, the metabolism process, which changes the function of this organ. The cyclic the MAF is usually about non-peptide uh, hormones and cyclic GMF is about peptide uh, hormones and if cyclic GMF increases the proliferation of cells which is of interest to us in this case whether this proliferation in this in this case but the cyclical MAF inhibits the proliferation so we wanted to see the ratio of these two products. Next slide. These are the results uh, which I have uh, told you about already. Where is the arrow? Go back. In intact animals, uh, those are lipid products, uh, GN and gain conjugates. Uh, then in uh, tumor carriers, uh, with a 20-day tumor, and how this number of these products increases, and then this is a 30-day tumor carrier, and this is uh, how the number of lipid grows. Uh, this slide uh, shows you the amount of uh, uh, final products, two bases, which are well uh, toxic, uh, and they destroy the members of cells, so they distort the metabolism and structure of cells in intact animals. You can see there's a growth in 20 days and 30 days. Uh, next, um, speaking about antioxidant ferments. If we were to look about the activity of superbacistus mutase, it uh, goes up in animals uh, in 20 day tumors and 30 day tumors especially. And this has to do with adaptation processes happening within the body because the liver is not damaged, uh, it's still healthy, there is no damage in it, and uh, it starts fighting against other processes uh, that start 
uh, going on within it uh, under the influence of the toxins produced by the tumor, but uh, this malfunction in the antioxidant system happens because the activeness of catalase uh, goes uh, down in within the 20-day period by two times, uh, two times twice as much in the 30-day period. It goes down even further. The reason why it's bad is because superoxidase uh, removes superoxid neon radicals so that uh, Cardiogen hyperoxide uh, uh, is produced, it has to be removed by catalyst, but it doesn't go away. So, the imbalance uh, of the activity of these elements uh, leads uh, to the antioxidant system being uh, damaged. And the same applies uh, to this glucose 6 uh, phosphate dehydrogenase, uh, which, as you can see, uh, goes down here, especially in the 30 day period, and most twice uh, uh, because glutathione uh, is not uh, produced um, and the activity of glutathione peroxidase is not maintained, which is the most important element in the liver. So we can see the pro accident uh, oxidant uh, balance uh, is uh, distorted in animals in their liver, but there is no tumor in the liver. In this case, uh, the liver is healthy, but it's in the process of adapting to the animal having these processes uh, unraveling in its body. Speaking about energy, the energy status. Of course, uh, it's uh, most historic on the ATF uh, indicator. You can see that it goes down as compared to intact animals. The same goes to get the F, which uh, says uh, that uh, there is uh, problems in the formation of these uh, uh, compounds. And the reason why uh, it happens is uh, because uh, during the intoxication of the liver, the toxins that are produced by uh, the tumor, the, they detoxed uh, by the microsomes in the liver and free radicals of oxygen are formed in the process and the process and uh, this uh, malfunctions occur. And the second thing is that uh, uh, carbonate uh, exchange, uh, hypercarbonate exchange um, processes are interfered with. Uh, one molecule, mol here we can see anaerobic processes starting. Uh, the oxidation of one molecule uh, leads on to a molecule of uh, of uh, at the F. C and you see how their status goes down and how it affects the energy process in them. It's all confirmed by the fact uh, how the number of lactate increases in uh, tumor-carrying animals and uh, that of pyruvate. The cyclical IMF is the secondary messenger. Cyclical uh, adenine nucleotide is uh, on that level in 20 level and uh, 30 level animals. You can see that uh, the content of these compounds is higher, which goes to show that there is an adaptation process going on. It's secondary messenger so that they receive the signal that increases the, uh, the ferments inside the liver it wants to fight back against what's happening in the body through the fermentation system, of course fighting against toxic compounds uh, as a detoxication process. Uh, the cyclical uh, the cyclical guanosine monophosphate, the same happens uh, here, not significantly, but still on the 20th day it goes up, uh, which is uh, basically, uh, and that's as much interest as you can get out of it after introducing ozone uh, interperitoneally ozonide uh, physiological as uh, ozone and intertumor and it happens uh, one day after the other every two days uh, then uh, animals are decapitated uh, you take the tissue of the liver just like in the first case and uh, the products uh, are analyzed please go back to the results a little bit further to where it all started, to where the results started. Please look at the primary products as compared to 20 day animals and 30 day animals and how they start shrinking after the introduction of ozone. 
and uh, the animals that were introduced also into here we can see 20 day and tumor animals and 30 day tumor animals and there are significant changes so which goes to show that the antioxidant system is uh, restoring in this case next slide and of course if we were to look at the activity of ferments next slide and uh, the same goes for the shoe bases. Next slide. Look at the activities. SOD goes up as compared to intact animals. In this case, well, it doesn't really go well, it remains on the same level, but uh, the activity of a catalase uh, goes. Up, uh, the balance of antioxidant is restored. Uh, the activity of the second last ferment is restored, and the activity of the third, uh, an important antioxidant, uh, glutath glutathione peroxidase, is also restored, which is very important. As for the restoration of pro anti uh, pro oxidant balance, well, the metabolic processes, the structure of cellular membranes, are being restored as well as their functions and uh, the accumulation and the restoration of energy products uh, serves to illustrate that uh, the F uh, is significantly improved and we can see that other F as compared to 20 day and 30 days uh, reds goes up but it does not reach the norm. The same applies to go on as in monophosphate so the energy status of the cell restores. In this case it's good even though there is a tumor in the body uh, still the plastic uh, processes in the liver are restored and the detoxification processes in the liver are restored uh, so which means uh, the liver helps the body handle the situation into which it is found. I'm not talking about uh, tumors now because we have uh, talked already about it. The tumor is also destructive. Next slide. The same can be seen in the hypercarbonate exchange products. Uh, I cannot really say that the lactate goes back uh, to uh, normal, but it, I don't think it should go there because we have a tumor which sends lactate into the tissue which goes to the liver to the glucogenesis reaction and that's how glucose forms out of lactate and this data we do not see any decreases in the lactate but the pyruvate goes down significantly so the carbohydrate exchange is being restored this cyclical um, adenine nucleotide uh, um, adenosine monophosphate it uh, goes up at 20 days and 30 days significantly the same uh, uh, of course applies uh, to gonosine monophosphate but the ratio of these products goes up which is very important which I have mentioned especially in animals which carry tumors it's uh, 133 as compared to 83 uh, which uh, means that uh, the inclination towards proliferation in the liver goes down sharply so which would uh, point to no metastasis uh, penetrating the liver because uh, the liver supplies all these products to the whole of our body you could say that the ability towards proliferation in the whole body will go down and these are the mechanisms that help in this case that help uh, 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 rats uh, in, in tumors and uh, the same happens uh, in the human body these important processes in the liver and the liver is a unique organ and one of the methods to correct uh, the structure and function of the liver can be through using ozon ozonized uh, cell line uh, which helps uh, the liver uh, restore and restore its functions of detoxification especially there is a tumor in the body when you're using an anti-tumor therapy which can have a detrimental effect uh, on the tumor. Thank you. Next, uh, 